adapted from a novel by Matthias Evertsen and directed by Per Hanefjord, are nearly normal family starring Christian Fandango Sengren, Bjorn Bengtsson and Melissa Ferhadovic in the lead roles, is finally released on Netflix. As the Swedish thriller releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview and discuss some hidden details of the series so that you can have the best viewing experience. Our spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. The series starts with a questioning scene of Stella where she is uncomfortable discussing about her relationship with her parents. A few years ago when she went on a field trip with a school group, a really attractive trainer Robin attempted to rape and underage Stella. But as she initiated the sexual tension between them, it was hard for her parents to file a complaint and they probably tried to save themselves from further humiliation. Especially her mother Ulrika who is an eminent advocate and law practitioner. Though her father tried to defend the kid at first, he could not oppose his lawyer wife who is well versed with how these trials usually play out. This incident probably led Stella to leave her school and leave her further studies as well. Four years later, on her birthday, Stella, who now works at a bakery, decides to revisit her old friend Amina, the daughter of the Sandals family friend. They have been away for so long and they decide to have a good time by going to a rave party. But soon their differences become apparent to Stella as she learns more about her choice of friends to the topic she likes to discuss. This makes Stella skip the party and she boards the car of a random stranger. With this handsome young man called Christopher Chris Olsen, she visits an art gallery and joins him at a party. After returning home, it seems she became quite familiar with this young man. Six weeks later, we find Adam the pastor father of Stella cooking dinner, but he is surprised to learn that not Stella or Ulrika will be there to eat dinner with him. Ulrika's excuse to leave the house in the middle of the night felt a bit suspicious to him and when he found that she forgot her access card on the table, it became clear to him that she was cheating on him with her ex-colleague Mikhail Blomberg. He decides to ignore it in order to keep his family intact and later that night he finds Stella entering the house secretly after taking a shower in the basement. Her attitude felt a bit absurd to him and the next day he woke up absurdly listening to her screaming voice. Stella was arguing with her mother about her missing phone and left the house without it. Adam tried to console his wife but Ulrika's attitude towards him felt a bit cold. Later that day, Adam found the police investigating a dead body in the park and as he was performing a christening, Ulrika received a call from Mikhail who informed her that Stella was arrested for the same crime. Before the police could read their house, she hid some bloody clothes of Stella in her side bag that she found under her bed and left for the police station to defend her kid. On the night of the murder, Stella returned home and cleaned herself from all the blood. A neighbor living near the murder location reported to the police about her and Ulrika is brought in for questioning. She also makes excuses about her disappearance on the night. Ulrika feels tensed as she carries the bloody clothes in her bag where she manages to leave the station, giving excuses for her ill father. Meanwhile, Mikhail meets Stella to discuss the details of the case and asks her to stay silent. Meanwhile, Adam is questioned and he tries to figure out a fake alibi for his daughter. Ulrika meanwhile dumps the bloody dress in her father's room at the care facility. We also get to see how Stella fell in love with Chris and she discussed her plans to travel solo. When they got near the seaside, Chris refused Stella's aggression and asked her to take some time before moving forward. This probably impressed Stella as something horrible happened in her in a similar location. In the present time, Ulrika tells Adam about Jenny Jan's daughter, the prosecutor on Stella's case. Mikhail informs them that law enforcement is locked on Stella despite having weak evidence. All they have is a shoe mark near the dead body and a pepper spray that was found on Chris which Stella used to carry with her. Originally from Stockholm, Christopher was dealing with some shady business and even his ex-girlfriend Linda Lavender complained against him for abuse, but that case was closed a long time ago. Adam secretly visits Linda as a friend of Chris's mother Budel and he tries to find any clue that would connect her to the keys. Adam however fumbles while talking to her and before leaving abruptly he finds similar shoes on Linda's rack. 
The investigative officer shows Adam proof that Stella had a relationship with the man, but he still is in denial. He still believes that his little girl is innocent. Adam is asked to take a few days off from his priest work as more and more people are objecting for his presence in the church. Meanwhile, Stella meets a psychiatrist who tries to find a possible reason for her disruptive behavior. Previously, Stella went on a vacation with Chris, but as he tried to become close to her physically, she found some disturbing details about him, like his eagerness to shoot their private moments and some hidden pictures of a different person in his apartment. Before getting sexually involved, she felt a bit tense as she was constantly reminded of the disturbing childhood encounter that she had to withstand. We also learned that Linda came to meet her in the bakery and it was she who told her about the cupboard in his living room. Additionally, she found a huge stash of meds at his place which screamed psychological instability or drug abuse. Adam goes to meet Walter, one of his old preacher friends, who consoles him that his suffering will soon end and that God never overburdens someone with pain so much so that they will give up entirely. Though this helps Adam a bit, he still feels no assurance of his daughter's innocence. Olika goes to every possible length to consult the case and after meeting Amina, she learns that Amina left Stella alone on the night and she leaves Ulrika abruptly which raises suspicion. After learning from Mikhail that police have discovered more evidence and some DNA samples from the murder location, Ulrika covertly infiltrates Jenny's office and takes picture of the confidential files. On her way out, she meets Jenny and makes excuses about coming to apologize to her on her husband's behalf for crossing the line. After successfully getting out of her office, she checks the files and finds Amina's name on the DNA list as well. Ulrika tries to find evidence against Amina and even tries to meet her secretly in her college library. She tries to make her confess about her involvement, but Amina ignores her, which makes her irritable. She meets Alexandria, Amina's mother, and goes to their home to attend a dinner invitation. She secretly goes to Amina's room, but before she can get her hands on any useful information on her laptop, Adam along with Amina's family members confronts her. She is then forced out of their house but Ulrika refuses to budge and ignores Alexander's attempts to discuss the matter. While taking a class, Ulrika has a panic attack and is taken to the hospital. After regaining consciousness, Ulrika questions her ability as a mother as she could not help her kid when she needed her the most. In the meantime, Stella tries to sweet talk the jail guard into giving her a phone to have a conversation with Amina but he refuses her request. The series then cuts back to the time when Stella goes to a bar with Amina and accidentally meets Chris who is out with another woman. At first, she is pissed but soon she forgives Chris and decides to have a good time. While leaving for home, Stella remembers that she left her bag inside the bar and Amina promises to give it back to her the next day. Later that night, she called Stella and informed her that Chris dropped her that night to avoid any misunderstanding. The next morning, she went to Chris's place to give him a surprise but he misbehaved with her and asked her to leave quite rudely, which made her suspect that he was with another woman. She suspected Amina and called her but her tone made her suspect even more. When her parents went on a two-day trip, Chris visited Stella and decided to have sex in her father's room to get an extra kick. But this time, Stella felt a bit uneasy which reminded her childhood encounter. If you listen closely, you can hear the sounds of the waves crashing on the shore in the sea, which was a clever way to instill uneasiness in her without going for another needless flashback. In the present time, Mikhail visits Ulrika, but Adam catches her in an uncomfortable situation. She immediately leaves the hospital and while returning home, Adam encounters Robin, so he gets out of his car to confront him. Later that evening, Amina comes to Ulrika's house and confesses that she was somehow involved in the murder and also tells her where she hid the murder weapon, a bloody knife. Ulrika asks her not to engage with the police just yet and as she leaves, she starts to execute an intricate plan. At first, she removes any signs of Amina actually being there, then recovers the knife. Next, she goes to see her amnesiac father, recovers Stella's bloody dress and burns them in a secluded location. Before coming here, she cleaned the knife at the old age home and left it there with other cutleries so that the police won't be able to trace that out. As she returns home, she has an argument with Adam who is asking for a permanent separation. Adam knew a long time ago that his wife was cheating on him but witnessing it firsthand was the breaking point for him. The relationship was difficult for Ulrika too as Adam had become distant from her after the incident with Stella. Adam thinks that it was the incapabilities as their parents that Stella ended up in jail. Stella on the other hand thinks as well that her parents should not be together. 
She even confesses to her psychiatrist that their relationship had become a sham over time. After arguing with his wife, Adam confronts Robin and beats him mercilessly for ruining their lives forever despite him being extremely religious. However, despite turning himself in, Robin refused to press charges against Adam but turns out it was Ulrika who was behind striking a deal with him. Meanwhile, the psychiatrist told Stella that her not reacting to the assault was extremely normal and it wasn't her fault that she could not sum up the courage to stop it. This breaks her down from the inside. Additionally, we learn that Stella met Linda again and she warned her about how Chris took complete charge of her life. Also, he assaulted her many times to prove his dominance. The next day, Chris took Stella to a plot that he bought recently and asked her to move in with him. Stella asked for some time and went straight to her workplace. Later that night, she went to meet Amina, but she was nowhere to be found. Stella also noticed some abnormalities in her messages, so she went straight to Chris's place, but he never opened the door for her. Stella then managed to get inside the building using the attic and she found Chris raping Amina. Turns out he drugged her in the bar as she was waiting for Stella. Then asked to give her a lift but take her to his apartment instead. He's the one who sent the message to Stella from Amina's phone and after understanding everything, Stella tried to save her best friend. She sprayed the pepper spray in Chris's eyes, smacked him with the grinder and left with Amina. As Chris was pursuing them violently, she decided to kill him using the same knife that he was threatening Amina with. She did all this to protect her friend and liberate herself from this awful man. Perhaps she regrets not doing anything the first time she was sexually assaulted and later she chose not to spare him. She couldn't trust the law or her parents to fight for justice so she decided to follow her own plan. Amina never liked Chris not only going out with Stella but showing interest in her when Stella was away. During the trial questioned by prosecutors, Amina admitted that Chris had drugged her and then sexually assaulted her. Prosecutors tried to accuse Stella of killing Chris because she was jealous of her best friend and because Chris was interested in another woman. But that theory was completely debunked when Amina Bessage testified that Chris raped her. Though Stella's father made the case worse by fabricating information, the mother saved her by consulting with Amina not reporting it to the police right away and instead presenting it on the day of the trial. Amina was also a law student and she got the technicalities of law that Ulrika wanted to use in Stella's favor. Finally, Stella is freed and realizes how hard her parents fought to bring her home. In the course of events, Adam is forced to confront the relationship between Ulrika and Mikade. At first, he thought it was better to break up but Ulrika wanted to maintain the relationship with him. She wanted his love and affection and the affair helped her escape her sad reality. Ulrika also had a drinking problem like her father and we learn that she has decided to attend group therapy to overcome her addiction. Adam and Ulrika were still together but this time they were actively involved in their marriage. Stella was finally able to fulfill her dream. She always wanted to travel the world and after overcoming seemingly impossible obstacles, she was finally free. The series addresses the importance of processing trauma and the need to create safe spaces for young people. It also focuses on the importance of parenting and therapy in addressing the underlying issues that can tear families apart. This show is a decent Netflix series that is easy to enjoy. The what happens next feeling keeps you going from episode to episode. The pace is slow, so if you like fast-paced crime thrillers, this show might not be for you. The work done to address this sensitive subject is commendable. The series stood out for its character, themes and overall emotional impact. Overall, this is a compelling watch about a broken family and the crime at its center. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching a nearly normal family on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off, adieu and I'll be back.